From treating infections through to Alzheimer's disease and even cancer, essential oils are often said to be a natural cure for many health conditions. But the people who typically make these health claims are actively promoting and selling essential oils, which automatically creates a bit of a bias. This video is an evidence-based sales-free look at essential oils, what they're good for and what they're not. An essential oil, also known as a volatile oil or ethereal oil, is a concentrated liquid that contains a plant's chemical properties. So the oil is termed essential in that it contains the essence of the plant's fragrance and aroma, its, its chemical compounds. It's not essential in the sense that water is essential for life. Okay, so the, the plant chemical compounds are typically extracted by crushing and distilling the plant, and then they're combined with a carrier oil so that they can be preserved for use later on. Now, the practice of using essential oils for the purpose of healing is called aromatherapy. The most common aromatherapeutic uses of essential oils are massaging into the skin, which is known as topical, or the inhalation of vapors. Both methods allow the oil's plant chemical compounds to cross into the bloodstream and take effect. The use of essential oils is rare in evidence-based medicine. However, there has actually been quite a lot of benchtop studies investigating the antimicrobial effects of essential oils. In petri dishes, they appear to suppress or kill many common bacterial and fungal strains, such as E. coli and Candida. It's thought that peppermint oil and tea tree oil make a useful antiseptic mouthwash and could help relieve a sore throat too. Certain oils, such as lemongrass oil and lavender oil, also appear to have strong antifungal properties for treating things like yeast infections. Both allspice oil and lemongrass oil have strong antiviral effects, which is a different type of infection again. And know that uh, viruses cannot be treated with antibiotics. This may all sound very promising, but there is only so much we can take away from test tube studies. A shot of tequila will kill bacteria in a petri dish too. Same if you swish tequila around in your mouth. Now this is why it's a long stretch to suggest essential oils will kill harmful bacteria in your body or improve immune function just because of what they can do to bacteria in a test tube. Researchers acknowledge this fact and the need for actual human studies that can evaluate the relevance of all of these test tube studies. Now we've seen in rodent studies that essential oil inhalation can lead to noticeable neurological and behavioural responses. This suggests the fragrance compounds may have a direct effect on the brain, at least they do in mice. Now to my surprise, the potential effects on the human brain have also been well researched. In the year 2000, a large review concluded aromatherapy is ineffective for treating anxiety, and it seems opinion has not changed since. Apart from one study which was not blinded, meaning that participants and researchers knew who was being treated with the essential oil and who was being treated with, uh, with the fake oil, all the latest trials came to the same conclusion. Inhalation of essential oils has no clinical effects on anxiety levels in patients, uh, at least after heart surgery or stem cell transplantation. Now, other studies focused on different mental health conditions or topical treatments um, tend to have highly conflicting results. It seemed that for every study I found with a positive effect, there was one that uh, didn't find any effect at all. If you still aren't convinced, a recent review of 201 relevant studies concluded that out of the 10 that were actually good quality, aromatherapy does not improve high blood pressure, depression, anxiety, pain relief, or dementia. Given all the evidence that you've just seen, to even suggest that essential oils may help prevent or treat a neurological condition like Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease is just absurd. Alongside exercise and diet, quality sleep is crucial for good health. The weight of evidence indicates that inhaling lavender oil may in fact be beneficial for relaxation and sleep quality. Rodent studies found it to have strong sedative effects, and in one study at high doses, it reduced the mobility of mice by up to 22%. Looking at human studies, lavender inhalation has been linked to improved sleep quality and duration in multiple studies. Note that no benefits have been seen with topical lavender oil treatment though, so rubbing it into the skin will likely not help. Acne is a common inflammatory skin condition in Western countries that affects 80 to 9% of teenagers, half of whom will continue to have symptoms into adulthood. Now, given how common it is 
and how big the market is. Surprisingly, there has been only two human trials on acne treatment with essential oils, namely tea tree oil. The most recent study included 60 patients with mild to moderate acne over a 45-day period, so half of the patients received a 5% tea tree oil gel, while the other half, the control group, received a placebo gel without any active ingredients. Now, the 5% tea tree oil was effective in reducing both inflammatory and non-inflammatory acne lesions compared with the placebo gel. So researchers speculate this was due to the reported antibacterial and anti-inflammatory properties of tea tree oil. An older study found that both 5% tea tree oil and a conventional acne treatment significantly improved acne symptoms in 124 patients, though tea tree oil was slower to take effect. So while it's likely not a strong standalone acne treatment, uh, tea tree oil may help as an addition to current acne medications. There have also been two human studies conducted by the same team looking into the topical application of peppermint oil and headache symptoms. The results have been very encouraging actually. The first study on 32 patients found that a 10% peppermint oil preparation provided pain relief when sponged on the forehead and temples. The second was more well designed and studied four headache attacks per person in a total of 41 patients. Uh, 10% peppermint oil was just as effective as a conventional headache drug, significantly reducing headache intensity after 15 minutes. Now, the results are promising, and it seems like a, a largely harmless alternative to aspirin or paracetamol, in my opinion. When used as directed, the risks of essential oils are likely very low, but know that doses published by manufacturers are not based on any published evidence because there is no information to estimate what a safe dose might be, whether inhaled or applied on the skin. Also remember that natural does not automatically mean safe, okay? Essential oils are no exception to this rule. Just like any other substance with a pharmacological effect, in some individuals, they can cause adverse side effects. A review in 2012 found that lavender, peppermint, tea tree, and ilang ilang oil, I believe it's pronounced, were the most common essential oils responsible for adverse effects. There was even one documented fatality. Now, most essential oils can be toxic when ingested and therefore definitely um, shouldn't be taken orally. For example, uh, a teaspoon of carvacrol, which is an active ingredient in oregano oil, can be fatal to humans. While prescription drugs must undergo rigorous safety and effectiveness testing before being approved, essential oils are automatically classified as safe. Now, the FDA considers essential oils a cosmetic so manufacturers are not required to prove their effectiveness, purity, or potency. The same goes for aromatherapy, which you are permitted to practice without a license. As essential oils are unregulated, any claims they can treat a health condition classifies it as an unproven drug rather than a cosmetic. So this is actually illegal. Now the company Young Living Essential Oils had salespeople uh, making these, these sorts of claims, so the FDA is uh, trying to catch up with them. These regulatory loopholes, alongside quite a bit of dishonest multi-level marketing, which is a whole other can of worms that I just won't get into today, um, yeah, this marketing has led to increasingly more eccentric and unproven health claims around essential oils. Therefore, it's important that we have a conservative mindset and do some of our own research before buying into any great promises. As is the case with many health foods and supplements, essential oils are not useless, but their effects are seriously overrated. Now, this is kind of to be expected when you consider that almost everyone who recommends them to you gets a commission, which comes back to multi-level marketing again, which I said I wouldn't get into here, so I won't. The strongest evidence available indicates that essential oils can help with headaches, sleep quality, and probably facial acne to a noticeable extent, but effects on anxiety, depression, and other psychological health aspects are pretty well underwhelming at this stage. Um, claims they can cure or, or help treat cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's disease, asthma or any other medical condition is seriously exaggerated and unproven and quite frankly dangerous. While I've tackled a lot of questions, I don't claim to account for every single oil nor every single use. There is so much that has not yet been studied really. So my best advice before you buy is to ask questions and think critically about extreme health claims. If it sounds too good to be true, unfortunately, it is. 
So that's all I have for you today. If you want to learn more, I've written about essential oils uh, in much more detail at dietversedisease.org. Or you can drop me a, a comment below the video. And please be sure to subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Bye for now.